Welcome to a new video and this video is about a device that I'm recording with and that I said I will not buy. Now it landed somehow in my hands anyway and I'm talking about the Xperia 10 Mark III. So let's get started. <laughs> So, welcome. The 10 Mark III is recording this little session here with its main back camera and a microphone attached. Does this mean now that the 10 Mark III has a Sony camera application that can use an external mic? Sadly, no. I have to use Filmic Pro here. There is also available a Gcam mod since a few weeks. So you can also use the Gcam mod to record with an external microphone, but I like to use Filmic Pro here because it works best. This is the main camera, the main camera lens that I can use. The Filmic Pro application does not have any stabilization, so what I have to do, or let's for this sake say any third-party application does not have any electronic image stabilization, you get it only with the Sony app itself but it isn't perfect. Uh, this is now recording with the Xperia 10 Mark III and its main camera 1080p 60 frames per second with the Sony camera application, internal microphones and this is what you can expect in terms of stabilization, colors and focusing. Hopefully it is focusing nice on my face. I have it already sometimes misfocused but usually if you have, have it arm's length it should focus fine on your face. And uh, this is 1080p 60, you can go up to 4K 30, but the Xperia 10 Mark III has an ace up its sleeve. At least when you're recording 1080p 30 frames per second, you can do something very interesting that I will show you right now that other Xperia devices, even in a higher class, cannot do. If you're recording in 1080p 30 frames per second, what you can do with Xperia 10 Mark III is you can switch between the lenses. And this is something very unique because usually on the higher class Xperia devices you're not able to do this. So let me show you how this works. First of all, let's go to the ultra wide angle. And now we are on the ultra wide angle 1080p 30 frames per second. So I can do this on the fly if I want to have to. Either tap on the 1x button to go to the 2 times and then tap again to go to the ultra wide, or I can just tap, hold, and then sl slide to get to the ultra wide or to the zoom lens. And uh, yeah, let's try the zoom lens, try to zoom on something. Let's try to zoom now. This is 2 times. I think it's switching now to the 2 times lens. I'm not sure. Maybe it is only using digital zoom. I can, of course, zoom in even more. Let's zoom in on this tree there. And this is now three and a half times the zoom. And I think it is pretty stable for three and a half times zoom. I'm not moving right now. Now I'm moving a little bit. Let's zoom in a little more. Five times. How does this look like? I can go up to ten times. Let's zoom in maybe there. And yeah, this is eight times. And this is now ten times. Now ten times is not as good, but it's pretty stable. So Sony has really an ace up its sleeve with a stability, stability in the uh, 1080p, 30 frames per second, I would say. So they improve the stability a lot in comparison to the 10 Mark II, I would say, especially if you zoom in. But uh, yeah, what do you think about this quality? It's a bit sad that you cannot use uh, some uh, external mics directly with the Sony Cam app. Otherwise, yeah, what do you think about this stabilization? How is the quality right now? 1080p 60 frames per second. I'm recording with the defaults that we can get on Filmic Pro. And I can walk a little bit around here. Uh, this little apartment that I have, you can see a little bit of my kitchen here that is new and uh, yeah I'm using the uh, gimbal here this is the Xeon Smooth X and uh, this one is uh, yeah a recording test to see how good the camera is now it's getting probably a little bit bright so let's go a little bit back here because there's a light up there so what do you think about the quality 1080p 60 frames per seconds I think if you 
manage to get a good, nice, uh, steady hand or stabilizer, gimbal of any kind of sorts, then I think the quality is okay in this dim lit situation still. Otherwise, yeah, just keep it steady. <laughs> keep it on a ground as tripod, for example, then it can work pretty nicely. And then also focusing is working nicely. Here I have, for example, my mouse and it should be able to focus on this mouse, on the text here as well. And the same goes also for little things, though I think the focusing system is not using some kind of laser autofocusing system. So if I'm doing this here, I have to hold my hand like this so it will be able to focus. And this is, I think, a problem that you have with the Xperia 10 Mark III. 10 Mark III. And um, yeah, in general, it feels a little bit heavier than the 10 Mark II that I had before. The camera system doesn't feel now super su superior to the 10 Mark II, just like what I said in my initial video where I said I don't want to buy the 10 Mark III because I don't see a benefit out of it. There's a slight benefit when it comes to HDR. It has now auto HDR that works. But there's still the issue that when you press the shutter button in the default Sony application that it will take forever to take the shot. I'm not sure what it's doing. It looks like it is yeah, refocusing, but it's doing the same delay even if I'm doing manual focus, which doesn't make any sense at all to me. Uh, when I turn off HDR, it is a bit quicker and the same goes when I go into bright situations, then also the shutter is a lot quicker. But it still is a pain in the ass to photograph something with this. I took some photos that you can see right now, some photo samples, and it took me forever to take them, some of them, where I had to refocus, refocus, refocus again until I get the real focus. So much that I thought maybe it might be a good idea to install the Gcam mod and try with this. And this is so much better when it comes to photography and also videography as well. Because when you want to take a photo, you just hit the shutter button. It's like instantaneously taking the shot. So if you own a 10 Mark III, this is my tip number one. Get the Gcam mod. I will link it down in the description as well. And I will show you some photos right now also taken with the 10 Mark III and the Gcam mod so you can see how this works. So here we go with the low light photos. First of all, darkness. The Gcam works splendidly with night sight for the Xperia 10 Mark II, uh, 10 Mark III in this case, as I figured out. As you can see here, almost complete darkness and I still can see something and it is not 100% sharp and you have some noise going on but it's a lot better than without this and it's a lot better than the Sony camera application and it's night mode definitely because it can produce uh, something out of this photo the same goes for here it is still a little bit uh, limited by the sensor itself, but it's a, you can see what's going on. And this is something that you cannot say from the Sony camera application. So Gcam is working fine here for these kinds of shots. But sometimes you have also good shots without using Gcam, uh, without using the night sight, using Gcam, just like this quick shot. But you can see it is already grainy and details are lacking. And uh, yeah, overblown highlights here and there. and. Uh, one issue that I noticed in dark night situations is even if Gcam on, uh, it can get perfect exposure, but the focus is like uh, yeah non-existent. Here the focusing was working fine, as you can see here. Uh, it was focusing on, focusing on stuff, but details are just muddy and almost not there. And there's a lot of noise going on. In daylight, you have much, much better shots. And as you can see here, a nice little low timer that I photographed here. You can zoom in 100% and yeah, you can see the detail, you can see the sharpness, you can see everything perfectly exposed, a white balance, a natural colors. And uh, with Gcam, you get also a little bit of boosted colors here and there, but you get good HDR, so it's not overblown. The highlights, it was really that gray this day, which is pretty nice. This is the ultra wide angle, by the way. And here the zoom shot, also you get details in the zoom shot. As you can see here, I can see some details in this uh, wall here with this little sun that we 
all are lacking and missing from summer. Then a little zoom test. This is one times, and as you can see here, yeah, who I can read a little bit here of the bigger letter letters. And uh, when I oops, when I zoom in, it is not really becoming better for some reason because if you zoom in, it is like stabilization is missing. There's no OIS for the zoom in shot. So you can see I can get a little bit closer, but uh, stabilization is missing. There's also a difference in white balance where this is a little bit yellow here and sharp with the main lens. We have a little bit of difference white, white and blue um, in uh, focusing as well. You can see, and uh, yeah, this is the ultra wide angle and it's working fine as well on the Gcam. So the Gcam in general, here again, another shot. I think it's the first one that we had, yes in darkness is working fine with the Xperia 10 Mark III. The 10 Mark III doesn't have a spectacular camera setup. I would say uh, it's a camera setup for like uh, around 200 to 300 euro, what you can expect. And um, But even in the 300 euro category, there are better camera systems, just like the Redmi Note 10 Pro that has a 108 megapixel main sensor that captures better stuff than the main sensor here. Though so we got the flexibility of zooming in and having and um, ultra wide angle so ultra wide angle same quality you get also on the redmi note 10 pro and the zoom and in shots don't look particularly bad uh, worse than here on the xperia 10 mark 3 just because we have this 108 megapixels and if you crop in a little bit in the sensor you get also nice little pictures so yeah this is what you can expect in terms of gcam on the xperia 10 mark 3 so gcam is definitely a must have for the gcam uh, for the xperia 10 mark 3 otherwise you get blurry pictures because of the lag in the shutter. And by the way, also what I noticed right now when I want to stop this recording here is the volume key will not work for some reason on Filmic Pro. Even if I have a set to volume key act as shutter, it's not working. So I have always go around the device, click on the button to stop recording, which is a bit annoying as well. And for vlogging, definitely something that will not be very, very good. So now onto some B-roll about the 10 Mark III probably and its camera system and uh, the display and the application and the software and many things more. So let's take a look at the device itself. My Xperia 10 Mark III comes in this orangey pinkish design glass sandwich on the back. No protruding camera bump, at least not really big protruding. And on the front we have a nice uh, front facing camera that is not housed in a notch or punch hole. The frame is made out of plastic, comes with nice clicky buttons for the volume rocker, a nice power button that houses also the fingerprint reader and sadly we have also google assistant button on the top we have a three and a half millimeter headphone jack and on the bottom we have the usb c 3.1 standard so we have video out and we have also fast transfer speeds which i really really like the whole device is like waterproof so ipx uh, 68 uh, support for this uh, we have no problems when it comes to connectivity. GPS signal getting is pretty fast. Wi-Fi signal is pretty strong and also telephony is no issue at all. So calling someone and having issues with reception or something, no issue at all. Microphones are working fine. The device overall feels like a pretty solid device. The battery is 4,500 milliampere hours and one of the highlights of this device together with the Snapdragon 690 that is, I think, quick enough. It is beating. 730 or 32 uh, Snapdragon processors in benchmarks and I think for snappiness and overall performance I don't have anything to complain about. The only thing that I could maybe complain is that the display is only 60 Hz in comparison to the Redmi Note 10 Pro for example that uh, has a 120 Hz display. You can see that the device is a little bit more fluid in day-to-day -day tasks, but the processing speed is on par, not even better on the Xperia 10 Mark III. So no issues there at all. When it comes to a little bit heavier tasks, like for example, video editing and video converting, then the Snapdragon 732 of the Redmi Note 10 Pro is a little bit faster than the Snapdragon 690, but this is only only marginally. And how often are you cutting videos on your smartphone? So in general, I'm 
really, really happy with the performance of the Snapdragon 690 on the Xperia 10 Mark III. No issues at all with the brand new update. And this is something that yeah, is a little bit of a problem because I had to go through hoops and loops to get the brand new update on my Xperia 10 Mark III because for some reason, I don't know, the pre-owner did never install an update or did something to the device. It was on its original firmware and on the original firmware it really was slow, sluggish and had the green tint issue. And so I had to upgrade to the new version to get the best out of it. And this really improved the whole device and brought it to a top level in terms of mid-range, entry-level mid-range, I have to say. So overall, this device is pretty, pretty cool and good for the 300 euro region. And there we come to the problem because this device costs 430 euro, which is a lot, lot more. Maybe you can get it for 400, but it's too expensive simply. It can compete with the Redmi Note 10 Pro, though cameras are worse. Battery life is better, but yeah, overall 250, 300, maybe initial price 350. Uh, comparing it with the Nova 8i, for example, this beats the Nova 8i uh, hands down in terms of speed, in terms of camera, in terms of almost everything. The only thing that might fall flat on its face is the stock Android. It depends on if you like stock Android or not. But yeah, if you like stock Android here on the Xperia 10 Mark III, you will get it. So yeah, this is a pretty good device for the 250 to 300 price region. But if you pay more for it, no, there are better alternatives out there. It's hard to beat Xiaomi in this price region. Even the 250 to 300 euro price region, we really, really have to have, or you really, really want to have a Sony device. Otherwise, uh, Xiaomi is the king there, and Realme maybe also as well, and some others maybe also. So this is my conclusion on the Xperia 10 Mark III device. Uh, it's not as bad as I would yeah, I, I thought it would be in terms of processing power. It's speedy there, but the camera is a little bit of a letdown here and there. The camera app, especially with the focusing uh, lag, basically, or the, the, the shutter speed lag and, and fo misfocusing sometimes. Uh, if Sony would improve this here, like say putting three times one over 2.55 inch size sensors, all the same sensors with different um, photo focal lengths, this would be awesome if they could improve the stability, if they could improve the shutter lag and uh, if they could yeah, offer maybe 12 megapixel instead of 8 megapixel shooters as well. Would be awesome, would be an awesome device or Sony should go the route and say okay we put in one of our 48 megapixels or 64 megapixel sensors, use pixel binning, use a bit of computational photography and uh, just uh, use this high resolution megapixel sensor with uh, digital crop in for zoom instead of a dedicated zoom lens and then we can maybe offer also a good wide angle um, uh, to yeah get a complete package leave the processing power to a stronger 7 765 778 um, processor from Snapdragon because the 400 price region is a price region where you can expect a 765 from last year or a 778 already or some something 750 maybe some better processor than the 690. The 690 is not per se bad but um, together it's not as good with the camera software so I think the camera software needs more processing power or Sony should ditch the Sony camera application, put Photo Pro with basic mode, maybe some restrictions here and there in it and let people use the camera with its full potential because with Gcam, Gcam mod, you can see the camera can take a lot better photos than with the Sony camera application. And yeah, it's a bummer that Sony is not shipping um, camera application that works fine on the 10 Mark III. Otherwise, 10 Mark III, solid device. Uh, if you want a device, uh, and get a device for the 250 to 300 price region. That's everything for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. If you have questions, write them down in the comment section and pssst, this will be the next SafeShares device coming 2022. So stay tuned for this as well. That's everything for this video. Until the next time. Bye.